Today on Real Life, getting help for ADHD on Living Well. Sharon Boland begins a new teaching series on the seven minute word and the inspiration of real women leading with Proverbs 31 principles. That's today on Real Life. Jesus died for you, the Holy Spirit, he empowers you, and the Bible is your guide to abundant life. I'm Don Black, I'm here with my wife Terry, and our founder Norma Bixler. <laughs> Ladies, good to see you guys. Thank you, I just saw you, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we all just saw well, each other. I'm glad to see Terry, she's, she's been away a little bit. I she, was, but I'm back. She's been all over the place. <laughs> Taking all, going all over the place. Oh my, I have been on lots of trips, lots of trips lately. Taking our son down to Tennessee to yeah. the see the school. The orientation, we are now officially University of Tennessee volunteers, orange Yo. and black. <laughs> Yay. The house is turning into an orange and black house. <laughs> And, and, and Terry then went on a little getaway with some of her I girlfriends. I did. Some of my college roommates. Hadn't seen them in six years. So it's fun. She just so, got out of college. I was yeah. just thinking that. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> just a last I married year. a very young person. <laughs> I had children. We had children when I was like seven. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. oh. Well, Norma, how about you? How was your weekend? It was lovely. And I have to say, for people that are watching in other parts of the country, it's too bad you don't live in Pittsburgh. Uh, oh, it's beautiful <laughs> It was weather. really lovely. Mm. No was... humidity. Yes, you're right. Wonderful sunshine and just right. great. <laughs> no mosquitoes. I didn't get bit at all. So it was great. I didn't either. I know. See? <laughs> great weather. That's right. Well, we celebrated Father's Day. We did. And uh, Don wanted to. Um, he got to choose what he liked to do for Father's Day. And he wanted to go for a hike at Shenley Park. Beautiful. Well, it's that was nice beautiful. For, for you guys that are outside of this area, it's a beautiful park in, mm -hmm. in really in the center of the city of Pittsburgh. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we went on a hike and kind of got temporary. I was temporarily the leader. A little, Not good. Little <laughs> off the beaten path. Little off. <laughs> Ended up in a golf course. <laughs> Did you have a clubs with you? <laughs> no, we left our clubs in the car. <laughs> But we, but we found our way through it. It was good. Uh, you know, Father's Day is always a blessing. Terry always makes Father's Day a, a great uh, day. And our children, every year I, I'm amazed at how kind they are and how, mm -hmm. how much they show well, they their love. love. Yeah, I know, I know. I love them too. And they, uh, We're blessed. I'm a blessed man to have such a wonderful family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You are. I yes. am. Well, and well, at church, too, they talked about, and you had also brought up that not only do we are thankful for our earthly father, but this is a great time to say thank you for our heavenly Ooh. father, our, our daddy, our God is our daddy, our father, and to be reminded of, of his love and, and blessing in our lives as well. So this is a great happy Father's Day to him, too. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the scripture's the center of all that we do at Cornerstone, and uh, we start every program with a little nibble from God's Word. Today, let's read 2 Timothy 2.15. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the Word of Truth. Amen. And, you know, that is the call on our lives is to be able to present ourselves to God mm -hmm. as a workman. Accurately dividing his word. The word that the, the scripture is referring to is the Bible. Mm -hmm. God, God's word. We need to understand his Bible, study his Bible, and as we do, he reveals to us. He reveals the secrets of life. Mm -hmm. That's the blessing of what the Spirit does in our lives. So I'm going to encourage you, get your Bible out every day mm -hmm. and read it. Study it. Understand it. And, and I promise you this, as you read the word, the Holy Spirit will give you a little, a little revelation with every time you open the Word. No more, you know that's the way He works. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes when you, you, you open your Bible and you, you know, you don't, you're just in a quandary right. about what, if you read it, 
<laughs> you'll find the answer. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. God's ever present with us, mm -hmm. always there to give us a little bit of a of revelation. And if you need something in your life, if you're seeking God, and Norma, our Signs and Wonders program last last week, Friday and Saturday, we showed it on Sunday, was an awesome program. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you had a chance to watch it. Well, I did watch it. You were in it, but I, did you watch it? I, I don't like to watch myself, I but, but uh, I have to forget about that. Uh, but I watched it, and I, and I wanted to watch it again and last night, and I... I didn't see some of it, but I saw most of it. <laughs> and it's the interesting thing, because when you watch that program, even if you're on it, yeah. you can still get blessed. Mm. I mean, it's just, it's just really interesting. That's the Holy Spirit's power. His anointing right. Right. On, on, there. on the program comes, to, comes back to us, even, mm -hmm. and meets our needs. Uh, we're we're uh, dedicated to meeting your needs through the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. So our prayer partners are standing by. They're here with us every day. They're actually 24 hours a day available to take your call, to stand with you in prayer. Let's start today's program with a, with a song. Well, Amen. Always do. Uh, we have Rick Buter in the studio today singing New Day Rising. Rick. Yay! times we may feel broken, lost in the dark, alone and overwhelmed. But there is joy in the morning, so hold on. Thank you, Rick. That 
is awesome. A new day rising. A new day. Mm -hmm. it's I a like new day. It. Yeah, it had a little bit yes. of a, a, a step, a little bouncing step. That's right, it did. Good way to start our morning. So, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. we need a little bit of a pick me up. Maybe, mm -hmm. especially on a Monday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of a transition to our next piece. <laughs> well, not being able to focus. <laughs> Being overactive and not able to control your own behavior sometimes, these are symptoms of what's called attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. Children and adults can have this incredibly frustrating problem. Our good friend Dr. Carl Benzio, founder and director of the Lighthouse Network, brings us helpful information on this week's Living Well. You know, we re recently relocated from Nashville, Tennessee, and in the music city, and all of the artists, and a lot of my friends, and we're talking, and it's very common. It's almost kind of chic to say, hey, I've got ADHD. You know, I've had so many guys <laughs> tell me that. How common is that? Well, ADHD, it's about 8% uh, of people have ADHD, about 13% of males, about 5% of females. It seems to be growing more and more in prevalence over the last 20 or 30 years and we're not quite sure you know why that is. Mm -hmm. um, some people say it's overdiagnosed, it's diagnosed all the time in people and some people say well it's still underdiagnosed and there's a lot of people struggling with ADHD symptoms and issues that aren't getting any treatment mm -hmm. in the process. So it's a real controversial you know psychiatric diagnosis that's now out in the news. Well it's for kids too. I mean no, that's not what they call it for kids. There's another diagnosis. No, it's an ADHD. I mean in the olden days you'll hear jokes that it was called B A D, bad kids. <laughs> you know? I might have been one of those. <laughs> but uh, you know now it's ADHD. Um, it used to be called minimal brain dysfunction in the past. The idea that the brain just isn't working mm -hmm. very well. And so it's called ADHD. Um, the A is attention, H hyperactivity, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And uh, a person can have either just attention issues like concentration, mm -hmm. focus, distractibility, organization of their schoolwork and those kind of things. Or they can have the hyperactive impulsive of those kids that are, you know, the classic ones that are rammy, can't sit still, always mm -hmm. fidgeting, mm -hmm. uh, blurting out, um, interrupting, mm -hmm. uh, going from task to task and never sort of sitting down and being able to mm -hmm. uh, pay attention and focus. That's all those guys in Tennessee. I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, is, 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 how's it diagnosed? It's diagnosed through interview uh, with the, um, you know, with the parents usually, mm -hmm. or if it's an adult that has it, uh, with the adult. Um, interestingly, about half the kids grow out of it and half the kids don't. We're not quite sure you know, why that is, but it's an interview and it's gathering data because ADHD um, is a disorder that permeates all of the person's spheres of activity. Mm -hmm. So it's not something where they just have trouble concentrating at school, but they're great on the football field and they're great in their, um, you know, in their relationships with their friends and church activities. It's something that cuts across all their activities and is, permeates all their you know, their spheres of, uh, of who they are as an individual. Mm -hmm. A lot of things can give ADHD symptoms. So, mm -hmm. you know, as we diagnose it, we need to rule it out. I had one patient who was referred to me, he was a ninth grader, mm -hmm. uh, and the math teacher says he can't pay attention in class. He's always fidgeting, uh, never concentrating, and I always need to call on him a few times because he's not listening. Mm -hmm. I got him in the office, and as I'm talking with him, I find out that his school is next to the high school, and he's getting beat up after school by oh. some high school kids. Okay. So he, that last period is math. He's worried oh. and frightened, so he has an anxiety disorder, and then he's thinking, well, how can I get a detention so that I have to stay after school so I don't get beat up mm. you know, by these peers? Mm. And so um, anxiety, depression, substance abuse, there's a lot of different learning disabilities mm. that can give the symptoms of lack of concentration, attention, uh, hyperactivity, and focus. So we need to rule out any psychiatric other psychiatric disorders, we need to rule out some physical, some learning. Sometimes the kids just can't see and they just need glasses or they need a hearing check. So we need to rule out those things. Once we've ruled out all those possibilities and we see that they have these symptoms, that there's classic lists that people can find on the internet of attention issues or hyperactive issues, then that gives us the diagnosis of ADHD. And once they're diagnosed, then what's the treatment protocol for that diagnosis? Yeah, you know, the. Um, Treatment is a bunch of different things. Uh, medications is, especially for the moderate to severe mm -hmm. uh, ADHD situations, uh, medications can help with focus, 
concentration, all those attention elements. They can help with the hyperactive impulsive elements. But just giving a medication all by itself isn't enough. You know, the medication just helps with symptoms, but now we need to help the kid, you know, manage, you know, some of life and the decisions that he makes as far as whether it's school, whether it's friends, whether it's being in part of a, a dance team or a, uh, an athletic team. So being able to have some modifications in their environment are important. So teaching them how to look at a person's mouth when somebody's speaking to them so they can listen to the directions because a lot of times these kids get home and they forgot the directions. They forgot what the homework assignment is. Yeah. Um, having the person, you know, having the teacher or the parent look at the child in the eye so they know they're making good, you know, nonverbal connection and communication. We want to put them away from sound, so not next to the aquarium in the classroom. We want them to be up close to the teacher so they're not seeing all the people fiddle with their hair and you know kick their notebook and those kind of things. At home we want a nice clean space that doesn't have clutter so they can concentrate, focus, you know, and have structure to their study time and to their activities. So those are some environmental things. Obviously sleep, nutrition, uh, avoiding you know a lot of uh, sugars and uh, caffeine and those kind of things are important in dietary elements. It sounds like uh, everything that a teenage boy does <laughs> is, is the wrong thing to do for, for that. Do you think that it's diagnosed too much? Is it overdiagnosed? Well, th well that's, the, that's the controversy with it. I th you know, I've seen people that are diagnosed with it because the diagnostic process is something that takes time, mm -hmm. it takes observation, and it takes ideally skilled people knowing what they're looking for. So sometimes parents aren't quite sure what to look at. Or they say, little Johnny's always fidgety. Well, he might be fidgety because he's uncomfortable in the house or he's getting picked on by right. somebody or he's just restless or he's just an active kid. And so I think it's overdiagnosed that kids with some behavioral problems are just given this, okay, well, they must be ADHD. Let's put them on a medication because and see if we can solve the, it. the behavior that's being reported. Right. Now, can any physician prescribe anti-ADHD anti drugs? Yes, yeah, certain medications, certain ADHD med uh, medications are what we call controlled substances. So things like Ritalin and Adderall and all those stimulant packages, the amphetamines, are restricted by the, the DEA. So you have to have a special license and a special um, certification to be able to prescribe those. Ideally, it's a pediatrician, mm -hmm. it's a family practice doc, a psychiatrist or neurologist are the four specialists mm -hmm. that are able to prescribe these medications and understand how they work, the side effects, and what other environmental interventions need to happen to be able to help that Sounds child like and the family. Sounds like you have family. to take time with them and, and, and get involved and see what the layers are like in that child or that person's life before you can make that kind of diagnosis. It, 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 it can't happen in one office visit. It can't happen in one office visit. I, whenever I see a patient, I talk to the, uh, to the child and observe them just in the interview. But a lot of times if they're face to face, if it's constricted to just me and them, they can usually concentrate and focus. I talk to the parents and then we get reports from the teachers. So we go over some past grades of the you know, last, last three or four school years to get that information so we um, we do lab tests to rule out other medical issues. Yeah. Sleep, you know, if a kid's not sleeping at all, yeah. well, they're going to be rammy the yeah. next day. So we have to look up. at all that package before we can come up with a diagnosis because these medications, you know, have some danger to them. We don't have time to go over the side effects because I know they do have side effects. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank you for coming and talking to us about this very important issue and for parents and adults that are facing that or thinking about that, pray first, seek, seek the wisdom of the Lord, and then find a qualified medical. You, you, you practice as the Lighthouse Network, and we can, you can find uh, references on our website, ctvn.org, so you can get more information and find out if, if this is of concern to you. Thank you for coming. God bless you, Doc. Thanks a lot, Don. Be Great to be here. Bye-bye. Later on Real Life, it's a fresh start update, looking back at starting the year in a healthy way. Sharon Boland begins a new teaching series on the 7-Minute Word. And coming up next, authors Lisa Troyer and Don Yoder discuss real women leading with Proverbs 31 values. That's next on Real Life. There is really no greater joy in my life than to see my children and grandchildren safe and happy. When I was young, the world seemed slower and safer. You could turn on the television and not be embarrassed by what might come up on the screen. Then I found Cornerstone, a television network whose mission is to uplift and inspire, that holds Christian family values at the forefront of what it does. 
They're here to support my family and yours 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's Cornerstone, and that's the difference. Hey, I'm Taylor. I'm Kayla. I'm Madison. Join us as we travel through high school and all the challenges that come with it. Kayla, look! Shirtless pick. What is she doing? <gasps> We're today's girls. With real faith. In real life. Join us on Real, real Life. life. Your partnership has enabled the Cornerstone Network to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to many hurting people in need. For your $30 a month commitment, we want to send you two inspirational books from Norma and Russ Bixler. The brand new Faith Wins and the classic Faith Works. These powerful stories will inspire your faith journey. It took us almost 10 years to be able to get the station on there. We had all kinds of troubles. I mean, I think about the day we went on the air and the problems we had, the day we went on the air and the attack we had the night before and what all happened. And, and we were in a war, the two of us. Not anybody, but God knows some of the things that we went through. But we didn't give up. Call 888-665-4483 and make your commitment to help Cornerstone transform lives with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Earlier this year, we honored a group of women that we called Women of Valor. We based our criteria for nominations on the Proverbs 31 scripture, defining the attributes of a godly woman. Authors Lisa Troyer and Dawn Yoder have authored a book about those attributes called Real One Woman Leading with Proverbs 31 Principles. Thank Here you, Dawn and Lisa, for joining us today. Thank this you. Proverbs 31 woman, am I intimidated by her or am I irritated by her? Yes. 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 <laughs> a little but, bit of both yeah. sometimes, maybe. Can you explain to me the Proverbs 31 woman? Because you guys have mastered her at this point, <laughs> writing this book, Real Women Leading with Proverbs 31 Values. I at least feel like we're friends. I'm not yes. sure we've mastered, but we're okay. at least friends now. We're on good, we're on speaking terms. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. I tore Proverbs 31 out of my Bible <laughs> at one point. <laughs> like, this is not possible. So how is she celebrated in the workplace? Well, I think everybody needs a mom. So it's like there are a lot of people that are coming into the workplace now in the millennial generation that uh, Dawn, she said uh, that babysitters, you know, keep the house from burning down. Yeah, mm -hmm. all they do is status quo. If you're a babysitter, because so many people in the workplace think, mm -hmm. well, I go to work and I babysit my coworkers. I'm the manager, so I'm babysitting them. That's so good. And all the babysitter does is keep the house from burning down. Yeah. Maybe some homework, maybe yeah. kids maybe get better. I mean, dishes. I have four kids. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it's status quo. No right. one grows and develops under babysitter. Right. So you have to be like their mom. Yeah. Because a mom, what then? Your heart is for them. You're trying to set them up to succeed. You're right. trying to position them right. to develop in the places they should be. So we definitely, in the workplace, a mom. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not, not talking about a baby and coddling yeah. mom, right. but a really good mom. Yeah, comes equipping in handy. your yeah, kids equipping. to be these exactly. independent, amazing mm -hmm. people that will change mm -hmm. the world. That's it. But I love what you do because you celebrate women in the workplace, mm -hmm. which you, know, you also celebrate women at home. It's mm -hmm. not just women in the workplace, but how does this book celebrate that woman, one of the 40% of women that are the main breadwinners of their homes right now? How does this celebrate that woman? Well, we wanted to take the opportunity to have that element of guilt erased. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that there are a lot of ladies that, you know, they feel like they are not That's walking right. in God's plan because, you know, they have to work. I mean, right. a lot of their single moms that are coming yeah, right. into the body of Christ right mm -hmm. now, and there's no choice. You know, right. the Bible does teach us that if we don't care for our own, we're worse than an unbeliever. So right. how do we correlate the balance between you know, women in the workplace and mm -hmm. caring for our families appropriately. Right, right. If you go into other cultures, mm -hmm. um, the women are contributing uh, mm -hmm. to the income mm -hmm. on a very consistent basis. Right. You know, going to market, selling the, the bread and everything that they make in the Middle East, it's just part of the culture. And, and here in the United States, uh, uh, post World War II, it's become a little bit more segregated mm -hmm. in that uh, the woman's place was in the home, dad would go to work. And uh, 
the church has kind of stayed in that mode, mm -hmm. and um, you know we really need to look at the attributes of the Proverbs 31 woman to realize that you know we do have influence in the workplace. I mean, yes, right. Queen Esther had influence in her workplace. Yes, so. I love her. She's a favorite. So, can you, for for those that are watching, explain how you know anything about business at all? Because I know, just because I talked to you before, that mm -hmm. you have quite an extensive business background. Can you tell us and, sh and share with the audience yeah. what we, you do? Lisa and I both grew up in family business, mm -hmm. different families, yeah. mm -hmm. but both in business. So from the time we were little on up, that was just part of life. Yeah. And so we followed mom and dad around and yeah. we sat at the lunch meetings and the breakfast yes. meetings. And I remember yeah. my dad had a library. He's not a big reader, but he'd have all these yeah. books and I'd read them and tell him what they said. You yeah. know, I'd be reading <laughs> Zig Ziglar and Ogmandino yeah. and Robert Schuller and whatever yes. was there that was about John leadership. Maxwell, and, I hope. Well, John mm -hmm. Maxwell, lots of Maxwell. Yeah. And so yeah. that was just part of the up Mm -hmm. It was like if you had a farm, that's mm -hmm. what you do, you know. Right, and so right. we both grew up in that environment mm -hmm. where it had to be okay to be in business because it was right. all we knew. Right. That's all we know. Yeah. Were your moms in business mm -hmm. too? Yeah, they were they equal helped? partners in the business. Yeah. And in our situation, um, our offices were very close to our factory. And mm -hmm. my mother, she kept all the books for the business. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we had that close proximity to the office, when we were sick, had to stay home from school, mom was there and mm -hmm. available. But, uh, you know, and that's the blessing of that entrepreneurial family business yes. model that's mm -hmm. done so well here mm -hmm. in the capitalistic society right. that, uh, you know, it, it offered those options. And I think we need to c encourage small family owned businesses. Yeah, amen. I agree too. That's mm -hmm. the kind of way I grew up too mm -hmm. with this entrepreneur and business. I remember leaving church and we'd go to the office oh, sure. and work mm -hmm. and my sister and I would order a Domino's pizza. We'd sit under a desk and, yep. and I was the vacuum cleaner yeah. of the, the whole building. So today I hate vacuuming. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you hate doing now because you had to do it in that upbringing of business? Well, you know, my first job, um, outside of the family business. I worked for a music publisher in Nashville for a while. Mm -hmm. And I got the job because I had clerical experience where mm -hmm. other people had degrees and they didn't have any practical experience. So I didn't really like answering the phone and mm -hmm. taking messages, but it really came in handy when I was looking for a job. Yeah, yeah. We had a publishing business. Uh -huh. So one of the first things that my brother and I did was take a stamp and free sample on papers to yeah. throw them out like a paper route to yeah. get people interested in the paper. Yeah. I don't like ink to this day. <laughs> I had ink from head to toe really? covered, so ink is no. Is ink a is no. a no. Ink oh. is no. What is your favorite thing to do in business? What's the favorite, the best thing that you do every day? Developing people. Mm -hmm. Developing well, that's people. That's the best part. When yeah. people grow and you see the spark happen, something goes on, light bulb, yeah. and it's yeah. like they start to really flourish and kind of grab more of, they don't even know it's God sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it's that God-given potential in them, and they see it, and they spark, and it's like, Right. That's exciting. Right. That's Connecting with people, building relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a product that you believe in and you're marketing mm -hmm. it, um, it's not it, it's not wise for us just to try to sell something. We need to try to connect with that person because do we bring value to their life mm -hmm. right. because we bring that product into their environment. And I have so many friends that I've met through business yeah. that, uh, you know, God He's opened so many different doors in that respect. You talk about bringing values, which is what this mm -hmm. book does. You bring values. Can you can you tell them tell me what they are? Or tell, the the value of understanding people, mm -hmm. of forgiveness, responsibility, attitude, resolving conflict, restraint, honesty, planning, generosity, and influence. Mm -hmm. How can we bring the this Proverbs 31 value into our workplace? It's really simple because at the end of every chapter, we give this little section, it's called the it factor, which was Lisa's grand idea, Ooh. igniting transformation. Yeah. And so transformation starts with, with us. That's mm -hmm. who it starts with me. Mm -hmm. And so it's taking each of those values mm -hmm. and examining your life mm -hmm. and saying, okay, I'm doing pretty good here. Maybe here I could do a little better. And you, right. you look at like, this is what it's about. This is what it looks like in action. Here's some steps. Uh -huh. And now I make a measurable action step. Yes. And it's just something that tells a who, a what, a where, a when yes. that I can apply right now that will make a difference in my life. Because yes. values make a difference in our life. Those mm -hmm. are those things like in Deuteronomy where Moses said, you do these things and mm -hmm. I'll bless you in the city and the country. Values are these things. Right, right. And so if you can apply right. that, you can see personal growth and you can see how it affects the world around you. Okay, kind of a hard question. Can a woman have and do it all? In the right season. In the right season. And, and, and that's, that's how we have to live life. I mean, we, we're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There's summer, right. there's winter, there's spring, there's fall. And it's like, you know, 
when the leaves fall off the tree, you got to get the rake out. I mean, you have to live in the season that you're in. And if you have small children, mm -hmm. and maybe it's not optimal for you to be out all the time in the workplace, mm -hmm. but you know, God knows what your need is, and He's equipped you for a specific purpose. And uh, you know, and He He created the season, so we have to be aware and discerning of what season we're in. Yeah. Amen. And you talked about seasons a lot. Yeah, I love seasons yeah, because that me means, too. here's the thing Nothing's about seasons. final. It changes. Yes. I know. Right? I so you're here things. right now and you think, oh, I remember because I have two that are a year apart. It was so hard. Yes. But it was like as soon as we turned that corner, now we're in a different season. Right. Because now we're like on the potty. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. and so it's a different season comes about and it just keeps going that way. Yes. Thank you guys for being, or you girls, women, guys, great we're women we're of God. We're Midwest and we're guys. Guys, yeah. right. guys yeah. Thank you for joining us today. If you need any information about this book, it will be on our website at ctvn.org. Thank you so much. We just appreciate your time and your investment that you're making here on Cornerstone Television and to our viewers. We will be right back. Now it's time for our daily Bible study. Today we begin a new series of teachings from author and speaker Sharon Bolin. Her series is called Fortify Your Mind, which she begins now on today's seven minute word. I want to talk to you today out of my book, Soul Prep. I want to talk about training your senses and fortifying your minds. In Hebrews 5.14 it says, train your senses so that you'll be able to discern good from evil. Train your senses so you'll be able to discern good from evil. A long time ago, a story was told to me about a man who used to go to the altar every Sunday. He'd get down on the altar and he'd cry out, Oh God, clean the cobwebs out of my mind. God, clean the cobwebs out of my mind. He'd go the next Sunday. He prayed that same prayer. God, clean the cobwebs out of my mind. The next Sunday came by. He pr prayed the same prayer. God, clean the cobwebs out of my mind. And finally, this next Sunday, he went down to the altar and he prayed that same prayer again. And the pastor went over to him when the guy cried out, Oh God, please clean the cobwebs out of my mind. And that pastor reached over, he put his hand on his head and he said, God, kill the spider. You know, there are times that we need to kill the spider. We cry out to God to do things for us that God's not going to do. He's given us the ability to do ourselves. The Word says that we are to train our senses and to fortify our minds that we might be able to discern good and evil. God gives us enough common sense to do some things for ourselves. The word senses is an organ of perception. What encompasses this organ of perception? Well, it's our sight, our hearing, taste, smell, it's our mind. You know, we really do have a habit of wanting God to do things that he's not going to do. We want him to do things that he's not going to do, such as he's not going to turn off a bad movie that you're watching. He's not going to paralyze your hand and blind your eyes to not look at pornography on the computer. He's not going to make you have a good attitude when you get up in the morning. He's not going to make you forgive, and he's not going to make you stop gossiping. He's not going to make you stop hating. He's not going to force you to be good. He's not going to stop you from lying. There are many things that God's not going to do. Catch my drift? We are responsible for our actions and for our choices. We train our senses when we study God's Word and not only study God's Word, but we put it into practice. In doing so, we fortify our minds to know how to come against evil, those things that would pull us away from what's good and healthy and pleasing to God. The word senses means a faculty of mind for perceiving and understanding and judging. If you're pursuing God and you're renewing your mind with his word, he'll strengthen you in every challenge that you face. He's blessed us with an incredible gift, and that gift is a great mind to reason and to think, to make choices. He has blessed us to know right from wrong, and he's given us the ability to make the decision to do what's right. We choose to love or we choose to hate. 
We choose to be kind or we choose to be hateful. We choose to be mad or we can choose to be glad. We choose to be bitter or we choose to be sweet. We can be kind, we can be hateful. We choose to be a victim or we choose to be a victor. And I want you to know today, no matter how much you pray and ask God to make you stop doing something, he's not going to do it. He is giving you the ability to train your senses and to stop doing it yourself. Today, you have the ability to stop habits that have been unhealthy for you, unhealthy for your families. You have the ability to choose to do right. God has given you that ability. You've got to kill the spider. The Word of God says in Romans 12, 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. In other words, do what's right. Heavenly Father, today I pray for those who are watching this program and listening to this message. I pray, Lord, that you would give them the ability and the strength and the courage to stop those things that have hindered and kept them bound in their lives. I ask you, Lord, to do this in the precious name of Jesus. Help them to take a stance against what, what's wrong, to take a stance against evil, and do what you desire for them to do in their lives. Lord, I ask you to empower them to overcome. I ask you to, to encourage them to push forward through your word. And Father, we do that by exalting the one and only true God, Jesus Christ. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word that's truth. I thank you for your word that's powerful. And I thank you for your word that gives us strength and courage and boldness to do what we've got to do to be overcomers. I thank you today, Father. And I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow again with another story from training our senses and fortifying our minds. We've got to prep our souls. I'm Don Black, president of the Cornerstone Network, and I would like to talk with you about the 60 most important words you could ever say. You see, we only have one life, and it's a gift from God, and with it comes the freedom to choose what to do with it. God is perfect, and His actions are always motivated by love. If we were able to fully keep His word, then we would be able to do that too, but we can't. But there is good news. God loves you so much that He sent His Son Jesus to die as a cure for your sins. How can you apply this cure in your life? The answer is very simple. You must turn from sin and accept Him. The Bible promises that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. We need Jesus, not only to have a good life now, but as a Savior to escape an everlasting hell. I've got to tell you the truth. Yes, there is a hell. And the Word teaches, it is appointed for men once to die and after that the judgment. Our life is short and our actions in this life will be judged by God. But friend, no matter what your past, He will forgive. If your heart's stirring right now inside of you, that's Him. Don't let this moment pass you by. Pray with me, won't you? Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and into my life. I want to trust you and follow you as the Lord of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Friends, you've just prayed the most important 60 words of your life. Call the number on the screen or go to our website to get a free copy of my book. It will help you take the next steps. And know this, that we love you and we're here for you 24 hours a day. And I want to welcome you to the family. You know, when I recorded that, I was motivated because the Spirit of God told me, do a, just a little bit of a presentation of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Just a presentation, and that runs different times of the day throughout the, the uh, program schedule. And we've had a lot of people who've called and asked the Lord to be their Savior. Praise See, the Lord. God mm -hmm. is reaching out to us. And as we, as we heard, we need to fortify our hearts and our minds as we walk in obedience to Him. And, you know, Terry, it's... it's it's a, an act of the will. Mm -hmm. It's an act of the will. Absolutely. We have to move by faith 
and we have to decide. We have to step forward. We've got to come out of the, the darkness that we're in, and if you feel like you're surrounded by darkness and your mind's not strong, you're in these circumstances that are beyond your control, God is there with you, and he's given you everything that you need to step out of it, but you, sometimes you just have to move. You've got to get up. You've got to move. And what I'm going to challenge you to do is call the number that's on the screen, 888-665-4483, and take a step. Take a step. Quit, quit complaining or just thinking to yourself that you're in this place that you can never have any, any way out of. There is a way out. There's a way out for you right now. So call us. Pray with us. We, we're going to pray at the end of this program. We're going to lay hands on these prayer requests. We're going to believe for God to touch. So put your name on, on the list, and we're going to pray and ask the Lord just to take you to that next place. God's a God of faithfulness. He wants to take you, and he wants to lead you into a new life, a life you never would have imagined. Sometimes you have to get a, a new start. Absolutely. A fresh start. Oh, yes, a fresh start. Yes. Oh, that's my, my cue. <laughs> Earlier this year, we encouraged our viewers to get a healthy start to the year with something we called Fresh Start February by eating better and getting active and with some form of regular exercise. Two ladies joined us after that month was over to tell us how they were inspired to becoming more fit. And we wanted them to come back and let us know how they're doing. Amy Chess and Lawenda Hallberg, welcome back to Real Life. Yay! Yay. Woo <laughs> All right. Well, now our fresh start is now Fresh Start June. So well, this is our follow-up. Well, how's it going, yes. ladies? Uh -huh. it, uh, don't speak ahead. up. I have to, a big question, <laughs> Amy. I have to that. tell you, we had... Um, some, I met someone at our prayer events, and they told me they were motivated because you shared you no longer drank Mountain Dew. Yes. Okay? Oh, boy. She drank a case and a half a day of Mountain Dew. She got me beat. And so she told me that after watching you, she has stopped drinking Mountain Dew. A See? case and a half a day? Yes, of Mountain Dew. So I just want to ask you, are you still drinking? Are you stopping? It's been over 100 days <gasps> since I've had soda, yeah. pop. Wow. That's awesome. That is huge. Anybody who knows me, that is huge. Like a major miracle. Major miracle. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I've only wanted to follow the Mountain Dew truck a couple times when I saw it. <laughs> but other than that, it has been, and I feel so different not to have all that sugar in my body. Really? I feel wow. so different. So you can tell a difference in your body. Yes, absolutely. Did you go through a withdrawal at all? I did. I okay. went through shakes. Oh, okay. I did. I actually had the shakes and I almost gave up so many times but I said no no I can't do it and then when you said I'm gonna have you back on I thought oh geez okay <laughs> now I definitely can't do it so <laughs> there's been days and I've been stressed and I thought if I just had a sip but nope won't do it. Wow, that's good. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. How about you, Linda? Well, you know, my goal that I had I did not achieve. You know, when you've asked me to come back I'm thinking well, you know, I'm not worthy of being back on here. And then I said, no, that old enemy, God, God did not give me a spirit of fear. Right. Or um, what's the other verse? Um, there is no condemnation in Christ right. Jesus, Absolutely. Romans 8, 1. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I am showing up. And what has happened since then is I'm still drinking all my water. Mm -hmm. And we had that prayer walk. Yeah. And when I came to that prayer walk, I told you about a possible promotion, and you both prayed with me, mm -hmm. and the Lord blessed me with that. Mm -hmm. Well, through that, stress has increased. Mm -hmm. And families at the nursing home bring in these snacks and good cookies, oh. and I'm like, yes, I partook of that. <laughs> <laughs> but now that I'm aware of that, now that's my responsibility to go and change that. And, and there's a Bible verse that has just been speaking to my heart. It's out of the abundance the hearts or the mouth will speak mm -hmm. and that says what I put into my mind is going to come out and it's the same principle of what I put into my body mm -hmm. will come out Absolutely. Absolutely. you know if I put so. sugar and carbs which I've been doing it's going to show us fat mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. going to happen and stuff and mm -hmm. so well congratulations I think Thanks. that fresh start it, we talked about it's all a bunch of baby steps. That's, right. That's what we are. And it wasn't just on eating, but I think that it's fueling our mind. And so you were sharing some scripture verses, Luenda, which it helps us to remind ourselves that 
um, we have to change the way we think a lot. And a lot of the times we have to think about there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. And that we are more than conquerors and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And I am a, I am a good person. I am a likable person. So we have to change also the way we see ourselves and take care of our bodies and take care of our spirits. We were a spirit, soul, and uh, body. And I know for myself, I have, um, I think I've called it a moldy start. Not always a fresh start. It's been a moldy. I've come and gone and done things and <laughs> eaten things I shouldn't have eaten. And yeah. But I, I have. I made some baby steps. I'm trying to exercise more, walking more. Mm -hmm. I think it's beautiful weather to do that. And trying to memorize scripture. I know I had mentioned to our Fresh Start friends that we were going to memorize Psalm 1. And I'm a little nervous to say that out loud right now. But I can I read it? I'd you love to read certainly. it. So it says, Blessed is the man and woman who walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of the sinners, nor sit in the, in the way of the scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water. Oh, isn't that awesome? We're like streams. And um, our tr I mean, we always will have something going. Um, that n our leaf never withers that we produce our fruit in a season. The ungodly are not so, but they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly will perish. So I, was, I had it memorized, but I'm too nervous to say it now. But. You did, you did a good job. Oh, you did. well, thank you. did a you. good job. There's something else I'd like to share, too, is, you know, one other thing that I did in, since March was I went for my annual physical and my blood work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my cholesterol, triglycerides, lipids, the, um, um, just your annual blood work came back off the charts perfect. Awesome. Yay. And so even my blood pressure has come down. Wow. So it's all within the normal range. And that's a big piece is like going for your annual physical. And you know, this morning on the news, they had about men, Dawn, about men going for their prostate checkups, going for their regular physicals for us women, mammograms, what have you. Those are great, great um, preventive diagnostic tools okay. that can save lives. Mm -hmm. You know, here at Cornerstone, we believe in the power of prayer and mm -hmm. healing. And hallelujah, there's many people that are being set free, mm -hmm. but we have our job also. Yeah, we That's right. Absolutely. We have Absolutely. our job also. How's it been for you, Amy? Really good. I also went and had my physical done, oh, which was a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And my doctor used the words, pleased as punch, because I am actually eating very, very healthy. Good. No more things out of boxes, no more things out of bags. It's all fresh, fresh oh fruits, goodness. fresh vegetables. I'm even eating Swiss chard. Do you know what oh, Swiss chard is? I love Swiss chard. A little bit of cumin, a little a bit of food. olive oil. One of the superfoods. Amazing. Awesome. Yes. That's really good so. for you all. You guys have really made some great baby steps. Well, you know, the body is the temple mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. So if you think about that, that means that we have the great privilege of God living inside of us. And as we treat the temple, mm -hmm. we are honoring God because mm -hmm. it's his sanctuary. And so you ladies are making steps towards improving mm -hmm. your temples Absolutely. so that you can be strong and have the natural ability to do supernatural things. Mm -hmm. That's right. And as a, you know, as a health care provider, I cannot take care of others if I don't take care of me first. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. That's right. Or, yeah. or, or demonstrate so, the love of Christ, the, right. the touch of God, mm -hmm. if you're not if you're not walking in that yourself. Well, congratulations, Thank congratulations you. to all of you ladies you. on a fresh start. Let's let's have a fresh start update again. Okay, that sounds we'll come great. Back on update again, you guys okay. at home. I know you're mm -hmm. you're excited about. <laughs> I, I, there's a little rumbling on the couch. <laughs> Excited about watching. Well, pray as you gather and move forward that you'll keep taking. You know, there's times that you fall, but then they got to get back mm -hmm. up, right. start again. It's not how you start, it's how you finish mm -hmm. that makes all the difference in the world. Well, it's about time for us to pray for the prayer requests that have been called in. We're excited about doing that. We believe in God for touches. But before we do, let's see what's on tomorrow's real life. Tomorrow on Real Life.
Financial expert Michael Pueller has help for planning your insurance investments. Arlene Williams is back in the real life kitchen with a great recipe for your family. And author Carol McLeod is all about No More Ordinary, rising above the circumstances for a life of purpose. That's tomorrow on Real Life. Well, we're back, ready to pray for you, pray for your prayer request. But before we start on the prayer request, I've got a couple praise reports that I want to share. The, the first is a rededication to the Lord. I'm very excited that uh, Bertha from Sacramento, California, has rededicated herself Yay. to Jesus. Praise the Lord, Bertha. God has something exciting for you. He's going to take you to a new place in your life. We're going to send you some materials that will help you that will help uh, feed you and give you some uh, spiritual strength for your next step. God's got, that's the first step. You've got lots of steps ahead of you, but mm -hmm. that's the most important. Mm -hmm. uh, sin, uh, let's, 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 see, let's see. Jerry, he called in. He said he had a healing in his knee, Norma. He has no more pain in his knee. Remember all those words of knowledge for the knees? Mm -hmm. There's one healing for Jerry. Praise the Lord. Uh, Robin and Stephen... Robin's son was not supposed to be home. Both mom and son ended up watching our television program, had a word of knowledge from Pastor Gary, someone whose father walked away from them. Stephen's father uh, had abandoned them, was led to read the father's love letter after prayer, breaking off the rejection and all of the pain. They prayed and Stephen was uh, quickened. And Arlene mentioned a word and so anyway, they're just really blessed that God spoke to them and touched them in a way that they needed. Thank the Lord for that. And the last one that I have in my hand, for Forita, Forletta, mm -hmm. called from California, that says uh, she just asked Jesus to come into her heart tonight. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise, praise God. And we prayed for her to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, there's, there's the, the, the fruit that endures. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to send you some, some materials. Terry. Well, I have several prayer requests. Um, a, a Sharon, who needs some marital um, healing. We also have someone who has pain in their chest. And um, Odella, she is also having some marital challenges. And um, Donna, who's having back problems. And so those are my prayer requests. We just have a minute or so okay. left. So I'm sorry. Please there just give us a couple of. Okay. I have Barbara, who is. Um, having insomnia and needs energy and I also have a family member who is suffering from PSTD and uh, really needs help feels broken oh I have uh, David and he has a problem with he has a lot of problems but I would say the main one is uh, he has he has a tooth difficult with his teeth but in spirit of infirmity he has Break that in the name of mm -hmm. Jesus. And there's Tanya who wants a closer walk with God. And then Wilda has high blood pressure. And um, well, you just spoke about your blood pressure. I did. Let's put those here in the middle. Yep. Mm -hmm. And ladies, let's lay our hands on them in the name of Jesus. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, and we thank you, God, that you know every one of these these people by uh, by heart. Lord, you know exactly the details. Lord, we rejoice with those who've come to know you as their Savior. Those who have come back to you, Father, we rejoice with them, Father God. We know the angels are celebrating. We pray for everyone who's oppressed by the devil, for the infirmities mm -hmm. to be gone in Jesus' name. We break that spirit in Jesus' name. We thank you for healing. We thank you for your touch, God. Thank you for your love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You'll come back, you. right? You'll come back. Absolutely. Tell us the <laughs> next. I won't be drinking any more pop. Nope. No. Well, it pops off, right. pops no. off the list. We'll be doing recipes on the Swiss chard next. Uh, yeah, we'll send us some Swiss, Maybe Swiss we chard recipe. Yeah. <laughs> we're so blessed to have Rick Buter with us. So let's, as we close the program, we're glad you were with us, too. It wouldn't be the same without you. We love you, and we thank you in Jesus' name, and bless you in Jesus' name. And let's, as he leads us in singing one thing, Rick. Amen. One thing I ask, one thing I 